Welcome to The Short Score, your weekly update of rope and news from around the industry, where you can find the latest on the sport from the pro rodeo ranks to the jackpot world. I'm Taylor Vollen, and I'm your host. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Vegas edition of The Score. It's your temporary host, of course, Taylor Vollen. You are never going to believe this. Actually, you probably can. We have another repeat team. Yes, you guessed it. Clint Summers and Jake Long are back. This marks their third round win of the 2023 NFR. And let me remind you that we are just four rounds in to the finals. They were 3-7 tonight to take the round four win and the $30,000 checks. If you're worried this episode might be a little repetitive, considering this is their third time joining Chelsea in the last four days, I promise you it is not. This is truly a very feel-good episode. Clint and Jake talk with Chelsea about what it's like to live their absolute childhood dreams, what their mindsets look like this year, and just how grateful they are for good horses. This episode of The Score is presented by Soft Ride Equine Comfort Boots. Soft Ride has been supporting our efforts in bringing you all the top news of the team rope and rope horse industries since the beginning, and they continue to bring unparalleled comfort for your horses and all their products. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, I don't know how many NFRs that I've been to, but I don't remember a start like this. I do. You do? Who was it? It was Speedy and Rich, and the funny thing is, uh, the reason I remember it, I don't know what the video is that I saw, but I said it on the Perina pre-show this morning, uh, this afternoon, and I even told Coleman, I said, I had this, I had the thought last night when he roped, and then I had this thought coming into this one, that they made a run, and I'm pretty sure it was 98-ish, and the announcer said, they've won three of the first four go-arounds, and just knowing that we'd won two of three, I was like, man, that, like, I didn't think it would happen, I wasn't saying that, but like, I was like, man, if it happened to go that way, that'd be super cool so okay. i mean i didn't know what team roping was in 1998 so um i was a kid in pittsburgh pennsylvania like so no uh so no i, I wasn't there for that one but. Or what? no i was i don't even know if i was never probably mind. knitting or something. knitting yeah. crocheting sure underwater crocheting it was 11 leave it alone oh, okay. <laughs> not as old as you <laughs> Well, 98, I was only 14. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> I mean, ain't that bad. <laughs> so, you don't get to talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Clint, how, I mean, describe what you're feeling right now. I can't describe it. I swear. It's just like I told that girl right there. We're literally living what every little boy that sits out there watching the NFR dreams of doing. Because I can, I can see myself as a kid still watching it. And, you know, just like seeing Speed and Rich back in the day do it. And it's like, man, I just want to go outside and rope the dummy or go to the practice pen, you know, and, and pretend that that's, I'm there. And to be getting to do this, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe it. I swear I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, you said that felt like the heel shot that you've been wanting to make all mm-hmm. week. And, and that looks like, for Clint, Clint, that looks like the same start that you have been, you know, working yeah. toward. That looked like transmission doing work and you riding well. Tell me about it. No, it is, honestly. Even last night when I missed, you know, I felt like last night was the same start I got the first night, which wasn't in the bear, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't late, but I was off of it. Steer was just a tick further in front of me, but I still, it still looks the same. Even though I missed my, my go, everything still looks the same. I just get going just a touch faster, I guess. I don't know, last night maybe being first. I just wasn't on on it. I don't know, but it does. It feels simple, uh, and not being arrogant by no means. It just for transmission, it seems like that's his deal. And then, then the steers are right there. He brings the horns to me, rope them, and then believe it or not, transmission handles the cow on his own too. He does an amazing job of letting them hit and opens them up for Jake. That's what JB. Used you know, to say that's that. he does. I swear. You can ask Caleb. Anybody that's rode him, that horse is amazing to handle steers on. Uh, if I could put that on every horse that I ever had, I feel like, you know, I'd have million-dollar horses, but um, just lucky to get to have him and, and to get to do it. And, Jake, Roger, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're talking about – we, we talk it. Colonel a lot. We talk all these legendary heel horses. Roger is now on the list of – Well, the, the funny thing to me is I don't – I don't think uh, a lot of people think that he's as good a horse as he is, um, but he really fits me. He's 
only two horses have I ever got on that from steer one like I knew I wanted this horse and he was that one and then the other one was Iron Man that I got from Shea and uh yeah pretty much from day one like I said he's just fit me and I didn't ride him because you know CJ I still considered my good horse and then when we went through what we went through but it's uh <laughs> it's insane to think I was thinking about not riding him here so uh <laughs> I really did battle like I, I had to pray about it a lot and uh I keep saying that this has to be a godsend thing and I remember praying before the run through that you know God you got to show me what to ride because it was really I was really really double-minded about it and uh I remember I ran the first three just chasing him down on Roger and he felt so much more powerful than he did at home and and then I got on CJ just to chase one down and I couldn't hardly get him to leave the box and I was like that's it I'm riding Roger no matter what and he gave me a lot of peace of mind and I mean I guess the results are speaking for themselves he's done amazing he's made my job as easy as it's ever been in this building and I do think it's a combination of how good he's working and then how easy transmission is the heel behind and and uh yeah, just wow. The funny part is I can remember when me and Jake started this year. We were practicing a little bit, you know, and we went to Guyman. I don't even want to talk about that. I don't <laughs> rep next very good. But the first main rodeo we went to was Weatherford, and Jake had been practicing on both of them. Yeah. And, you know, CJ's his main horse, and, and he's ready. I don't know how many NFRs right here, and the horse is great. And he keeps going back and forth, and he's like, man, I, I really like this horse. Don't know how he would do. And he ends up taking him to Weatherford, and we have a steer that hauls butt. And I hooked it on him, and he healed the crap out of him. And I can remember everybody talking about about Roger, like, man, why don't you ride that horse? That horse looked rank. And uh, ended up, you know, we went back and forth through the summer, and then I feel like Roger just he stepped up, and him and Jake, I mean, they clicked. That horse, I think, is a really, really good horse. What's hard, too, is I had a lot of people. So I would send videos to just a few of my friends and, and my family and stuff. And CJ looks so cool when he works right. And... And what really messed up my mind more than anything was our last 10 steers that we run before we left the house. I mean, we made nine out of 10 just about as flawless runs as you could ask for. And I was sitting there going, oh my goodness, why did that have to happen? I told him, I'm like, I'm almost upset that that went that good on, on him because- it, On CJ. Yeah, on CJ. On because CJ. that's what really just put a lot of doubt in my mind of what to ride. Right. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. He's just, he's super easy. And like I said, he's, he fits me because it's the closest to Colonel that I've been on, just the feel and the stride and how he comes through the corner. And and uh, it kind of feels like I'm getting to ride Colonel a little bit again here, so that's that's pretty cool. Clint, you said that you were thinking in your mind riding down the tunnel that 4.8 would be, you know, you wanted to be just faster than 4.8. Mm -hmm. um, what were you watching in the round, or what did you see, and, and what was the game plan, and, and why that number? I didn't really, you know, see anything. I watched the start a couple of times just because I felt like I was just a touch off of it last night. And I hadn't been up there but one night and got to watch like two runs before me. So tonight I got to watch several and I realized just how fast the start is truly. And, uh, but in my mind, I knew that steer, like I said, Marcus had kind of got a weird go and, and broke the barrier. And I thought for a second, well, for some reason I nod and the steer does turn his head or do something. I seen that four eight was fourth. So I was thinking, surely if he turns his head, I get a little bit of a pull or something that we can still go, you know, a swing or two, and I set him up and be four, five, four, six. But I had planned on everything working out and making our run. But also in my mind, I wanted to have that in the back. I didn't want to come across and do something dumb. And uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. I wasn't necessarily thinking, hey, let's beat four, eight, but I wanted to have four, eight in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, I hate to ask this or say this but I mean there's got to be some level of pressure that you just won three out of four go rounds like this is not a position you thought or you dream I mean you dreamed of it but yeah. it wasn't one that you expected necessarily to be in um what's the mental game plan for the next 24 hours till you run the next year just try to I think the funny thing for me is that I don't mean this the way it fully sounds but this is the first time in my career in my life that I truly don't care how the rest of the week goes. And, and I just, if we're meant to win a gold buckle or if we're meant to win however much more money, then that's awesome. Like, I'm, I'll be up there hooping, hollering, and enjoy all of it. But if we don't win another dollar, I'm going to enjoy these last, what, six rounds six we've rounds. got. And, and I really, I'm just happy to be here. And I know that sounds weird, and I don't want it to sound like I don't care in a sense of, like, I do care. I mean, we work hard at this. But I'm not going to be upset if we don't win another dollar like this has been awesome and i'm just tickled to be here i'm tickled that we've won i mean we've already 
won a ton of money. I mean, this is great financially for my family, and, and um, you know, hopefully we keep winning, and, and that would be awesome. So, you yeah. know. I agree with Jake. You know, <clears throat> it's it's awesome to be at this point and have this much money won. And I feel like, you know, life's short. you got to enjoy every moment. You know, who knows? You might not ever make another NFR, so you might as well enjoy every one you get when you're here and uh, and not dwell on it. Like today, Caleb actually told me, you know, he said, could be a lot worse he said one day we won't be able to you know and talking about old old world champs and stuff and you know he's he brung up some and he said you know they'd probably give up all their gold buckles to run one more steer in that arena and that was a that was a pretty good point and i think you just got to have fun and at the end if we got a chance for a gold buckle great but i think for now on we just keep doing what we're doing and make our run and just see what happens i think the biggest thing to me that and i don't know if it's just that i'm getting older like i mean as you said, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely one of the veterans here, and uh, I feel like a couple years older than you. <laughs> <laughs> but so am I. We're still young at heart. Yes, we're we're and I, and we're not old in the grand scheme of life, but in rodeo, we're yeah. you know I'm damn dang sure not uh, not a spring chicken. But um, you know, like he said, I I don't know when the last one of these is going to be, and I don't want it to. I don't want to look at it and go. Man, I was miserable that last NFR. Like, I want to enjoy this and because I'm stressed all year trying to get here because yeah. this is the Super Bowl of our sport. And so I don't want it to ever be like I didn't have fun last year. I was dead set on we're going to try to dominate. And, you know, and, and obviously our finals didn't go good last year. And, and this year I was like, I don't I really don't care. I don't I mean, I want to do good and we're going to work hard. And I mean, I always want to win. I'm competitive. But if it doesn't go the way I want it to go, like it's not going to steal the joy from it and so it's which obviously the way it's going is pretty hard to be upset about but <laughs> um how much is routine important to you i just think about you and caleb have i, I don't know because you're a healer you kind of hide out you don't well, have, I have a few things going on that are so we've gotten to be really good friends <laughs> with with some of the people that work out here and uh dave blake does the does the gate at night and helps everybody park and uh he won't even speak to me until after the rodeo. That's our our thing. Mm-hmm. So like he like we've gotten to be pretty close friends, and and he won't even look at me. And John John Colvert, he's one of the head security guys. Um, his girlfriend gives me a good luck hug every night before I walk up. And then John is now down here by where we line up, mm-hmm. and I have to give him a fist bump. And and so we've got our own little superstition thing going. Your and well, John, last night I didn't give him a fist bump. And we didn't do any good last night. And he he said, you know, well, you didn't give me a fist bump. That's what it is. So tonight I went up, double fist bump, <laughs> hug. And I'm like, if that don't work, you got to get Abby back out here. So it's uh, she flew home to Seattle. And uh, and so he said, yeah, I'll do that pronto. So I guess, you know, I don't, you know, obviously none of that's mm-hmm. actually making a difference for anything. But I, I think it kind of goes into the having fun in a sense mm-hmm. of like, there's other people that are enjoying i'm sure the same way with clint like there's other people that are enjoying what we're doing with us Mm -hmm. and uh it's fun to bring them along and actually kind of have the camaraderie and that's what like i show up early to rope the dummy and hang out and i i got out of the habit of doing that the last few years and so it's like i said it's just been been enjoyable yep absolutely me and caleb we do everything pretty much together every day out here you know we get here (laughs) we get here early we pretty much sign (laughs) at the same place every day and uh I normally go pick him sign. up. <laughs> <laughs> I normally go pick him up in the mornings, and then uh, we'll go sign, eat eat lunch, and then swing by my place, and I'll get ready, or swing by his, vice versa. And then we're always here early, and we like to go see the draw and listen to him draw. And uh, I think that goes back to two, you know, part of the moments. You'll never know when this is your last one. So getting to do little things like that is pretty cool. And then we normally go down to the lounge and hang out and. I just feel like it's part of our routine, and Let's and it it, it helps. Yeah, we get we leave lights off sometimes. <laughs> but. You guys have milk and cookies or something. Well, I mean, back in the day, we did. You know, I can remember being kids and being in the same bed, and he's the worst sleeper Easy. ever. But <laughs> this is a PG show. Right he uh, here. <laughs> but you know, he had a he had a point too last night. He texted me because I was I was kind of upset last night. I didn't I didn't do anything. I went to the room and ate some soup and he actually went out and top golf and this and that and pretty much enjoying it you know and it it this hasn't the best finals that caleb's ever had either but he's still enjoying it you know and and still doing the same routine which i'm just a sore loser i guess but um i think that the same routine every day has a lot to do with it just like at home you know 
you have to get in a routine uh, as far as practicing. And I, I feel like if you don't have a routine or a work ethic, then you're behind the eight ball. And uh, I think all that goes into a mental preparation. And I, I believe in that pretty big. I feel like we've been, uh, last question, I'll let you guys go have your family time. I'll talk to you all night. That's what you always tell this me. I love it. We've been talking about transmission for years. I've been writing about transmission for years. But I feel like this is like now everybody knows transmission like and all yeah. the team members always knew he was the best head horse in the game or you know one of the best for years for a decade but you know that's that's pretty big to me too because when i bought that horse last time i bought him like three weeks before the nfr or something like that and i i had really big intentions i wanted to come here i knew that horse was older knew he kind of had some soundness issues when i bought him all that didn't matter but i felt like this was the stage that he needed to be on and then my last finals I didn't do so hot on him, and uh, it wasn't his fault, just didn't do good. And I rode him the next summer, didn't make the finals, and uh, we just didn't rope good. But that horse, I feel like, is one of the greatest head horses there's ever been. And I truly wanted him to be able to shine as well. Just like Joe winning the horse of the year. Yeah, it's great, it made me feel really good. But that horse deserved it too. I wish I could take that trophy and show it to him and let him know, you know what I mean? Um, because, I mean, he's in the, you know, in the limelight, and I, I want transmission. He deserves it. You know, he's been at it. He's 19 years old. I don't know how long they rodeoed on him. And that sucker's tough. The only reason he's still going is because he loves it, and I feel like he deserves it.